Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, anytime during the video, hit subscribe to see more from me. So today it is time for November Favorites, the video where I get to share with you all the skincare and beauty products that made a big impression on me this month. But I'm changing things up just a little bit with the format. So if you're so ready to find out what my faves and fails were for the month of November, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right on it. So first up is the Polish Choice C5 Super Boost Eye Cream. Now this is a product I did not expect to like at all. And in fact, it was really kind of like in my mind, slightly risky for me to even try it out. So why is that? Well, longtime viewers probably know that my skin and vitamin C, not a great match, right? Um, pure vitamin C is an excellent ingredient. It helps to stimulate collagen. It's a potent antioxidant that protects your skin from photo damage. It's brightening. It's really an like all service type of ingredient, but unfortunately it just seems to irritate my skin, especially in higher percentages. So when I saw this product, I was like, I wish I could use it. I probably can't. Diving deeper into the ingredients though, I was like, hey, wait a second. This is not using pure ascorbic acid. This is actually using the stabilized forms of vitamin C, particularly three of them to create 5% of stabilized vitamin C. Now I have had really good luck with the stabilized versions of vitamin C. They tend to be gentler on the skin. They just don't cause that type of irritation, but they do still bring all of those same benefits as a pure active vitamin C. So this was not something that I was expecting to like at all. And quite honestly, I was figuring this would be something that I would try it out for a couple days in a row, find out that it was irritating my skin and then just like it would drop out of my routine and and like never heard from again, right? And that's just not what happened. Uh, I started using it, I started liking it, I continued to use it. I started using it in September, we're at the end of November, and I'm still using this every single morning. I really, really like this. I was very surprised. Clearly, I didn't get any irritation from it. I find this to be a very gentle eye cream. So that like really checks the boxes of like products that surprised me, that made a big impression on me this month. I have been waiting to talk about this for a while, Though, because I really wanted to see, okay, beyond just being gentle and something I can use, what does that actually do for me? Does this actually help my skin at all? And that's why I wanted to talk about it this month because I am seeing those benefits. I am noticing that this, I think the hero benefit of this eye cream is that it really does brighten up the skin. Um, if you have any kind of darkness underneath your eyes, I do. Um, it's kind of, it kind of manifests almost like red, but especially if I haven't slept very well, or maybe like my, my nutrition is off or my stress levels are high, you know, when your body's just kind of out of funk, like it kind of shows on your skin. That's definitely what it's like for me. And when that happens, that kind of natural, like discoloration and redness gets a lot darker. Um, and this, eye cream, I really feel like kind of helps with that. It's not a 100% corrector, right? And those of us who do have some like genetic dark circles know that like, it's not going to fully 100% go away, right? It's just about improving the look of it or bringing some vitality back to the eye area. And that's what I feel like this does. This brings the vitality back to the eye area. I've also been kind of dabbing this on little dark marks on my face when I am using the eye cream. I'll just use the extra and I'll be like, oh, there's a little pimple there. Let me get that dark mark or here on my chin or whatever. And I do find that it ha actually helps those to fade a little bit quicker too. So the brightening power on this is very, very strong. So this is something that I've just been slotting into my morning routine because you know that vitamin C is so good in the morning paired alongside of your sunscreen to help boost that antioxidant protection. So that's how I've been using this one. And a couple of months ago back in the summer, was it the summer? Or was it September. I can't remember. I think it was September when I talked about the beauty of Josan eye cream and how much I was really enjoying that. I would say that these are pretty neck and neck as far as like the benefits that they give. But if you are looking for something to brighten up your skin, I actually think the Polish Choice does it just a little bit better. Vitamin C is such a hero brightening ingredient. Love the beauty of Josan. Still kind of using that a few nights in only at night, a few nights a week for my collagen stimulation and fine lines. But if you're looking for brightening, 
that's where this one shines. That's how this one really impressed me. And uh, I feel like I am not suffering from vitamin C FOMO anymore. So the next product really follows the same theme as Polish Choice, something I didn't think was going to work for my skin, but it ultimately ended up impressing me. This is the Glow Recipe Strawberry Smooth BHA and AHA Salicylic Acid Serum. Now there's a lot of reasons why I didn't think this was going to work for me. And one of the biggest ones is the BHA and AHA in here. You know me, you know your friend Kelly, you know I have sensitive skin, you know that I use tretinoin three times a week, I get my prescription through agency, it's got tretinoin, it's got azelaic acid in it, and it's intense. You know, it. my skin is used to it, but like it is intense and there's not really room on my face or in my life for anything else. I feel like it just complicates things like too much chemical exfoliation, definitely not a good thing for my skin. That's how I damaged my barrier many years ago, right? So I'm always cautious about that. So it's like, I don't wanna put like another like tretinoin application on, but gosh, my skin is just getting kind of congested. It's just getting kind of dull. Like it just needs a little boost. It needs a snack. I don't need a full meal, you know what I mean? I just need a snack. That's what I've kind of like um, nicknamed this product. It's my chemical exfoliation snack because there is BHA in here, it's salicylic acid, and there's a couple of different forms of AHA in here, but it's very gentle and it really is focused on just kind of helping to gently um, exfoliate away the excessive dead skin cells to gently kind of like give your complexion that little bit of AHA glowing boost. You know what I mean? It's not like a full blown deep, like high percentage peel kind of product. You know what I mean? It is a snack exfoliating serum. And that's what I absolutely love about this. It did not irritate my skin and I was fully expecting it to. I also have to tell you, there is artificial fragrance in here. Another reason why, like I probably shouldn't like this product and I even made a video called I shouldn't like these products, but I do, and this was in it, right, this month. I think a big reason why is the fragrance is so minimal in this formula. The scent itself, the level, it's so low. Like, it definitely is a beautiful, like, candy strawberry scent that I absolutely love, but it's so light. You just smell it on application, and then it goes away. It's not heavy, and it's not perfumey. It actually has a very natural, I know I called it candy. I meant more like sugary candy. It does have, like, a natural kind of smell to it. It's not that heavy heavy, perfumey kind of cologne type of smell. It's very light, it's faint, and it goes away quickly. And that's what I like about that. Um, you know, I have to say the texture though too is really, really nice because a lot of AHA or BHA types of products are like these really thin liquids or they're just really boring like gel type textures that don't do anything but just deliver the ingredient into your skin. They don't hydrate, they don't plump, they don't moisturize, right? And sometimes they even smell kind of funny too. So like maybe that's why there's a little bit of fragrance in here to so kind of mask that funny smell of AHA or BHA. And so I appreciate it because it's a nice experience. But the texture, this beautiful, plump, hydrating gel texture, it's juicy, it's bouncy, and that's what it does to your skin. And I love that. I love that this just isn't a, like clinical treatment or application of AHA or BHA. I love that this does something more for my skin and, and helps plump it up and, and make it feel so good. I love that. With the gentle exfoliation, it's exactly what my skin needs, and it works. I mean, the I remember the very first time I used this, I was fully expecting to wake up with irritated skin or have it, you know, the, the next day or something. And all I woke up to was like really glowing skin. Like I put it on at a moment where I felt like my skin was congested, where my skin was looking really dull. And I woke up the next morning with improved skin. That's what I want in an exfoliation snack. That's what this gave me. The Derma E Skin De-Stress CBD Cheek and Eye Cream Corrector. I've actually had this for a couple of months and I liked it since I first used it, but I've had a lot more use for it because of the funky weather and the really cold weather, really making my skin get a little inflamed, a little bit red and really, really dry. So this is cool because it reminds me, there's no centella in here, but it really reminds me of like a Sika cream, you know, a cream that you put on irritated skin to calm it down. It does contain um, some elements of CBD in it, which is actually, you know, I always like thought that that was just like a silly, like trendy marketing thing that people were doing a couple of years ago when CBD became really cool, right? Um, I always thought it was just like a funny marketing thing, but there is actually a lot of benefit to back up applying CBD topically to your skin 
great research for ingesting it, right? But um, on top of your skin, it actually has a really strong anti-inflammatory benefit. And it is being studied for the use of treatments for like eczema, psoriasis, acne, rosacea. It's got a really strong calming anti-inflammation benefit on the skin. This is also using Tamanu oil, which you know I absolutely love because again, another great anti-inflammatory oil. It's very calming for the skin and it has great wound um, healing benefits. It's very regenerative for the skin. So if your skin is, if it's ailing, if it's irritated, if it's raw, Tamanu oil is something that really helps to heal it up. And because it has strong wound healing abilities, it's actually used in the treatment of scars um, and discoloration on the skin as well. So it's a really powerful um, oil that doesn't just moisturize the skin, but has that calming uh, benefit to it as well. The third hero ingredient is Pinus Panacea bark extract. You may also note it as Pycnogenyl because The Ordinary has an antioxidant serum that is just Pycnogenyl. And that's what the ingredient is. It's Pinus Panaster Bark Extract. Strong anti-inflammation ingredient with huge antioxidant benefits to it. This ingredient is so good. So this cream definitely does have a soothing effect to it and I really like it for that. But the reason that it stands out to me, because look, there's a lot of creams I love that soothe my face, but what makes this one pretty special is the fact that there's a little bit of a green tint to this and I love like a skin friendly skin calming cream with some red correction to it because that's what green tint does it helps to neutralize redness on your face and when it gets cold my face goes red especially around my nose and like my eyes and stuff like I just get a lot of natural redness because I think my skin is just a little a little bit irritated from the coldness and the dry air uh, in the inside. So I do find that that redness is a little bit more prominent in the winter months. This isn't like a concealer. It's not full on covering the redness, but just that little bit of neutralizing is so beneficial, especially for days where I don't want to wear like foundation and most days I actually don't. So on those days where I just want a little bit of a perk up on my skin, just a little bit of that redness to go away, I will just like put this all over my face, just a couple of dots and then just blend it in with my fingers. Wow, it makes such a big difference. If you're into being foundation free too, it's something I've been experimenting with a lot. This is something kind of handy to have if you do suffer with a lot of redness or even if you have rosacea. This is so rosacea friendly in my opinion because it helps to calm the inflammation behind the rosacea, not just cover up the redness. But yeah, if you wanted to use like this, which is a little bit of powder, I think it really helps to enhance your skin without covering it up. So let's talk fails. The first two products that I wanna talk about are more like eh, not really right for my skin, but they're not bad products. They don't fail as a product, right? They're just not for me. But the last product that I wanna talk about, the third product is a total fail <laughs> and I'm teasing you for it. But let's talk about the first two first because these are actually really good products that I would recommend for not my skin type. These are the Manuo Factory R Vegan Heart Leaf Sika Cleanser and Toner. So I actually talked about the Manuo Heart Leaf Sika Ampule last month as a favorite. I really like that ampule, especially as a very gentle way to calm breakouts on the skin. I believe in that review, I did tell you that I think it'll work for all skin types, but especially for oily skin types because it's such a light texture. And that's exactly how I feel about these products. These are great for oily skin uh, types out there, or even like normal skin types, balanced skin types. I think you'll like these because these are very, very, very light. Now let's start with the cleanser first. The only reason I didn't like the cleanser is I think that it is just a little bit drying for my skin. I don't find it stripping. I think this is actually a very, very gentle foaming cleanser, but it just left my skin a tiny bit um, drier than I would care for it to feel. And I have to say, I've really been gravitating towards like milk cleansers um, over the last couple of months. So I think that this is something that would work for me in the summertime where my T-zone is um, probably overproducing oil just a little bit, but I'm just getting so dry right now that a traditional foaming cleanser like this one isn't quite my jam. Now I do want to talk about the toner too because I was actually really excited to get the toner because you know I love toners and I think that this is a nice toner. It's watery, it's light, it's quickly absorbed into the skin. It's just not super duper deeply hydrating for my thirsty AF skin. Like you know I'm so dehydrated. 
you know that like in the winter time it gets worse for me right so i just didn't find this to fully satisfy my skin to the level that i really wanted it to but that doesn't mean that this isn't hydrating it's just not enough for me and i think that like if you do have oily skin you actually do need a lot of hydration on your skin but you're going to be more sensitive to toners that feel a little bit thicker or slippery on your skin because it feels like those build up thickly on your skin and you're already battling against your oil. This is not something that's going to build up thickly on your skin at all. This is not full fat water. This is just hydrating water, right? There's no slip or body or anything to it. So I actually, while these failed my skin, I don't think that they will fail everybody's skin. I think that these are good products. This entire line from Manyo really is more focused on more balanced skin types, on more oily skin types. It's a lighter line, maybe more like humid weather, hot weather type of line lighter skincare it just doesn't match my skin in this season okay but let's talk about the total fail the product that like I don't think I can justify anything <laughs> about this product I don't think this product is for anybody I'm sure there are people out there that like it but like I am going to classify this as a total fail the product is community 66 nourishing rich moisturizer so this is a new line at Sephora it debuted I don't know if it was in the like the late summer maybe it was or like early fall but just in the last couple of months it debuted I do have a lot of products from them it was sent to me by the brand I've just been very slowly working my way through the products I, I can say with confidence I really do like their cream um, cleanser I've been using that it's actually almost empty it'll be in the next empties video I'm pretty sure I've been liking that a lot it's a great balance between like a foaming cleanser and like a cream milk cleanser it's really nice and balanced and it doesn't make my skin feel dry but it's effectively cleansing on on the skin love it great wonderful product very straightforward so then the next thing I wanted to try was this rich moisturizer because hello it's eight degrees outside right it's cold my skin is really dry and I'm always looking for that like holy grail moisturizer and it's not every day you come across that right well let me tell you it's not this it's not this at all and I rarely will come out and tell you that I don't like something so completely but like I, I don't like this at all I can't see this working for like anybody Okay, it really comes down to the experience of this. The ingredients are fine. Um, lots of moisturizing emollient ingredients in here. The ingredients list tells us a lot, but it doesn't give us the full story, right? So while I can say I wasn't super excited about it, I was not turned off by any means. There's no fragrance in here, no essential oils, no drying alcohol. So I gave this a whirl and oh my God, it's just such a massive fail. Point number one, it smells so so bad. It smells like vinegar. Isn't that so strange? It smells like vinegar, which is really strange because I clean my house. Like I, I do like all my mirrors and glass and stuff in vinegar, vinegar diluted with water. So this like reminds me of cleaning day. <laughs> it's like on my face. Cleaning day. Um, it smells like vinegar. Um, ugh, it has the worst texture. It's kind of like gloopy and like it's got like, it's like, like cottage cheesy. It's kind of chunky. It does like melt down once you start to get it onto your skin and kind of warm it up, but it is so sticky. It's so gross. It does not absorb into your skin like with any type of elegance whatsoever. It just feels kind of greasy and sticky. It smells like cleaning day. It doesn't feel good on your skin at all. There is a moisturization element to it, but the stickiness just really is such a major turnoff. And in fact, like I, like I said, I can put up with a lot. Like I can put up with some weird smells. Texture is a huge one for me. I really want the texture to be on point, but honestly, like I can't even see myself using up this cream as a hand or foot cream because it's so sticky and it just feels like, like it's on my skin right now and I just want to wash my hands. Like my fingers, it, I did this and my fingers are like sticking to my palms right now. It's really sticky and tacky. And it's just gross and it's not a fun experience. And like, I don't mind boring skincare. I don't mind straightforward ingredients with no frills. I don't really care about packaging. I don't care about fancy scents. I just want something that feels good on my skin. And this doesn't even achieve feeling good on the skin. Do you know what I mean? So like, ah, what a big disappointment. Cause I had high hopes. I was thinking this might be my new wintertime moisturizer. 
this ain't it. I talked about this last month and, and the lesson that I want to talk about this month is really an extension of that because last month I talked about how I had to keep reminding myself to be happy with what I already have, to be grateful for what I already have and to focus on that and not to want so much and not to get caught up in, in the cycle and the hamster wheel of consumerism and thinking that buying something is going to bring me you know, happiness or is going to relieve my stress or whatever it may be, right? I think we, we attach a lot of emotion to purchases thinking that's going to fill some type of hole in our life and it very rarely does, right? And so as I've been working on being grateful for what I have and focusing in on that and less of the consumerism, I have been finding myself also thinking a lot about simplicity. Like how how can I simplify things? How can I simplify my life? How can I just focus on the things that matter, that like truly, truly, truly deep down in my heart matter to me in life and filter out the rest of it? And that has actually really helped me in areas, like I said, of stuff. I and mean, when you just want so much, just focusing in on what matters really helps filter out the nonsense. But even like with relationships, with people, with like content that you consume, news sources, I just feel like we get so much thrown at us every single day that it does really complicate things and it can make your head like just spin because there's just so much going on in there. How can I focus on the simplicity of things? How can I just focus on what matters and filter out the rest? That's something that I've been thinking about a lot. And also thinking about just like, how can I make things easy? You know, not just simplifying it, but like making things easier for myself. Making things easier for me would be like deleting the shopping emails or unsubscribing from the shopping emails, right? That's one way for me to make it easy for myself. How can I focus on simplicity in my life? Well, focusing on the things I already have. How can I simplify those things even more? How can I simplify the information coming into my brain so I don't get overwhelmed because there's just so much coming at me? This is something that I feel like is the next evolution of like taking a breath before you hit purchase is like, how can I simplify now? And how can I focus on what matters? Because this is the season, right? This season, we tend to focus a lot on gifts. We tend to focus on giving, but also receiving. Um, and we do tend to focus on a lot of material things that in the end don't really matter. We think they do in the moment. There's a lot of pressure. We think it matters. But it doesn't. This season is about giving. This season is about coming outside of yourself, coming into your community. This season is where we, we often are very acutely aware of what others don't have because we are able to put an abundance of food on our table for our families, but we're very acutely aware there are people who are not able to do that at this time. We are aware of the people who can't put presents under the tree for their children or who can't put as much or can't even get a tree, right? These, this season, the holiday season is very much focused on consumerism and materialism, but that's not what really matters, right? That's not the simplicity of it. That's the complicated part of it. How can we focus in on what really matters? And so that's what I'm trying to focus in on. That's what I'm trying to see through all the other stuff that clouds the vision a little bit and just focus in on that. And so, yeah, as so we, we head into the holiday season, it is stressful for a lot of us. It doesn't feel simple. It doesn't feel easy. But I just want to invite you to take a moment to see if there's a way that you can mentally or physically or socially um, or materially do that for yourself. So let me know your favorite products from November or let me know what did not work for you. What were your fails? Let me know in the comment box below. If you love this video, you watched all the way through, you even listened to the message at the end, but you haven't hit subscribe yet, please. I would love it if you would hit subscribe to my channel before you take off. I do a lot of skincare videos, a little bit of self care, and I also do full length videos and short. So maybe turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop when the new piece of content hits. I hope you are healthy, that you are happy in this holiday season, and that you are safe. I love you so much. I am so grateful for you, and I'll see you in the next video.